Hello everyone and welcome back to my Ultimate GNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we're going to rescue Landley Kerman who is in orbit of Minmus and land Landley on the surface of Minmus, have Landley plant a flag fulfilling that contract and also pick up a green sandstone. At least that's the goal, but who knows. Anyway, we are going to first unlock miniaturization which I've been wanting for a while and I think we'll use the Clampatron docking port junior for this, but I'm not sure. That's why I'm unlocking it for right now. Of course, there's a lot of RCS thrusters and possibly some other useful things like mob propellant tanks, but we will see. I'm not sure whether it's useful or not. We'll find out. So I'm going to try and put together the mission into one rocket. Previously, we had three pieces. We had the uh, return vessel that was staying in orbit around Kerbin, we had the transfer piece that was going between Kerbin and Minmus, and then we had the lander which would land on the surface of Minmus. I'm going to try and put that all together on one rocket and see if that's possible. We do have a lot more pad capacity, 140 tons, we can have more than 30 parts, so it should be possible, but let me see what I can do. Okay, so this is our new Minmus mission, and it is quite a bit different from the previous one. Uh, it does have three parts, but they're sort of different. Let me just pull the launch away for now. And at first, we do have the Leo pod, even though it has two seats and we, strictly speaking, don't need both seats right now, because we're just picking up one Kerbal from Minmus and bringing that Kerbal back, ultimately. Uh, but yes, I decided to go with the Leo because it re-entered safely, so that's a good start and I kept the top part the same and I think uh, I had ultimately put two uh, radial parachutes on it, drug chutes, but I don't think we needed those that's a bit risky uh, but we have the same life support but we've changed the engines I've gone with the ant engines now they have better uh, ISP than the engines we had before they are light, and when we put four of them, we can have redundancy. So that's why we don't have high engine quality. We don't really need much burn time since it's just going to be coming back down from low carbon orbit. And we really don't need this much fuel, but just in case we need to catch up to something, it might help. So our other options were like the Hebel engine, but these engines are really big. So it's tough to fit two on there for redundancy's sake. And then this uh, Notion engine is really big too. I mean, it's more like the AJ-10-190 or uh, more like the AJ-10-137 on the service module of Apollo or something like that. So yeah, the ant engines are helpful here. And then we are still using the Hermes as our lander pod because it's so light. And we have plenty of fuel for landing on Minmus. But it doesn't have to go there independently now because we will have a transfer stage. Instead of having a vehicle that goes back and forth between Minmus and Kerbin, for now we'll just have a transfer stage that pushes this pod over there and brings it back. Uh, space is a little bit cramped and that did cause problems last time. Uh, we'll try and do the mission quickly and hope that that's not an issue. Uh, shielding is also a possible issue. We are not carrying much. We could carry more than we have now. I wonder what kind of Delta V issues that would cause. Not that our Delta V is reading properly right now either. Um, I mean, I don't know even though if it's worth it or not, but uh, let's just put 0.4 for the heck of it. <laughs> I might regret that later. So we have only tiny little antennae on the pod. And we've unlocked miniaturization, so we now have these attitude control, th control thrusters. So we don't need that RCS module that we had before. Uh, this one. We kept using this upper stage kit. Well, uh, since we have these little RCS thrusters and they're cheap, they're only 70 apiece, we really don't need this business. The pod already has some mob propellant and something else we unlocked were these uh, propellant tanks so we have two of those we have the RTGs down here as well and yeah that does it for the lander and then this is a transfer pod it has a spark engine here because the spark has 322nd ISP so that's pretty good and it has ant engine backups 
and, and this doesn't allow radial attachment, but it seems to allow radial attack because it's a bloom tank, but it allows radial attachment close to the ends. Uh, so I just attached the things to the ends, and then in the case of these docking ports, I shifted it down. This is actually attached to that tank there. So these solar panels will give supplementary power. These are relay antennae. And yeah, that should be okay. Uh, this has an independent controller underneath here. It's not a whole lot of electric charge, but it's something. And that's how our mission is currently configured. So this should be able to push the lander all the way out to Minmus and then bring the lander back. As we're using it as our um, habitat space as well for the trip. Not the best thing perhaps, but it is light. The launcher is not light though. The launcher is fairly large. And we're we have a 140 ton limit overall and I've used a lot of it. And what we have done is up here we have one of the uh, the vacuum version of the Perseus engine. We've used that before. And so we've got hydrolocks up here. So there's a hydrolock stage. And then here we are using just the Titan engine, you know, the Palace uh, the fuel engine, the LR87. And so this is all liquid fuel down here. And then we're using Titanish boosters, uh, though they're thrust limited and they're not the biggest type. So they're Prometheus 1 Sultan boosters. And we've got the fairings as our nose cone since I didn't see any good nose cone. Um, so yeah, the, they'll provide us with a little additional boost which we solely need considering the size of the core tank here. And then that's pushing the cryogenic stage up here. And that is the idea. We do not have anybody inside initially. We will just send it without anybody. And then we'll try to pick up our Kerbal. Uh, make sure Lanley is still there with the contract. And that will wipe out, hopefully, if we do everything properly, wipe out three of our contracts. The sandstone, the green sandstone is uh, push. Uh, we. We'll see if that's possible or not, I'm not sure. Okay, so with this being the case, let us try it. It's expensive, 59,000. Well, it's sort of looking like a proper rocket. Uh, the taper being uh, a little bit controversial, but it does fit the boosters nicely. These little boosters that uh, don't look so much like Titan boosters as they look like maybe the H2 boosters for the Japanese H2 vehicle, but they're visibly three segments, I suppose. Okay, well, anyway, throttle up. Oh, it's not really my throttle again. I just set that before starting and it still doesn't. Oh, we don't have any control. No crew control. Why does no crew control matter? We have, we have controllers. Okay, recover vessel. Let me just make sure that the Leo has a controller. It does. It's right here. See? Probe control core. Should have enough comms otherwise. I mean, we're just on the pad right now. That has a control core right there. This has a control core right here. This has a control core right here. There are three control cores. Okay, well, I'm gonna try and launch it again. Okay, well, I can't tell it to control from there because we don't have any control to tell it that. It's not a problem to send a Kerbal up. If that's what it needs. Uh, let's see, Kerbalism. Well, let's put... Valentina doesn't have any stars. Let's put Valentina in. I mean, it should be alright, maybe. I mean, I don't have... If somebody knows what's going on here, uh, you can please tell me. But I just want to get on with this, so... We'll just put Valentina on. I don't know if that's going to make it possible to for this part of the mission to work, though. But I don't know why it's not working, so... Maybe that's just a launch issue, or is it going to be a persistent issue? Okay, well, anyway, we'll try it with Valentina inside. I hope I don't regret this. 
Well, I mean, it seems to be because we don't have comms. It says it's not connected. But the internal comms of stuff should be enough for being at the space center. Uh, oh, let me check my difficulty settings. Okay, enable comm network, fine. And we do have extra ground stations, and this is all like this. I mean... Whatever. Okay, SAS on. Throttle. Oh, now my throttle works. Oh, well, that's because we have control. Alright, so that makes sense. And... Launch. Okay, I should have waited for a move up, but it's okay. Totally safe for Valentina, I'm sure. Very much the largest rocket that we've launched to date. Over a hundred tons. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. Somebody asked about the little ice flows. As far as I know, those are the little ice flows. Those things down there. They're just not very well located, ice flows. Okay, booster set. Fine. Oh, well, they got together in the end. All right. Well, I mean, this has very low thrust weight ratio at the moment. That was expected. That's why we needed the boosters. Some early variants of this were looking quite a lot like the Delta Three. I avoided that narrowly. Okay, separation, separation, and ignition, and okay, that wasn't important. Fairings. Alright. So this launcher is capable of launching, well, oh, okay, hold on. Uh, I just worry about weird fuel flow because that's ticking down our payload as well. Um, we should be able to get 10 tons to orbit or more. It looks like more. I mean, this can't draw the other fuel anyway, because it's a hydrogen system. Now well, we've extended those antennae, and those have plenty of range too. Okay. Oh, no, stop, stop, stop! Okay, it's not stopping the engine. Stop the engine. Sheesh. All sorts of problems. I mean, uh, I sent my throttle down to zero and it did not stop the engine. I used X, which is normally how you stop the engine. It didn't stop the engine completely. Uh, Alright. Uh, oh no, it has no more ignitions. Shoot. Well, we don't get to use the extra Delta V in here, but I guess I wasn't planning on it anyway. So, yeah. No, that's a derelict stage in orbit with extra. It can launch more than 10 tons to orbit, but uh, for now I think we've got 10 tons. Let me just stage off. Ooh, that seemed violent, but okay. Everything's tense here right now. These don't need to be extended or anything. They should be providing stuff. Wayfarer 2 is probably not the most important thing right now. There are RTGs all over the place as well. Okay, so I don't know why we don't have comms. <laughs> I'm going to restart the game and see if that helps. That's the only thing I've got. Okay, I have restarted the game and we still have this problem. I'm not too sure what to make of it. We've used these antennae before, and the conical ones that I have on the Hermes lander as well. And of course, the pods have their own internal comms, though, so fine, it doesn't have enough fuel, uh, crew, I mean, but uh, it also has the controller up here. It says no telemetry. But then, and there's also one here. And I don't know. Uh, let me just time warp a bit to see if we ever get a connection. Oh, oh, we just got a signal. 
we got a signal from Valentina Tereshkova Hexpad. So if Val's on, they can only get the signal from there. I don't understand. Uh, well, where's, where's, where's Minmus? This doesn't seem right. Is it like the ground stations have a limited number of connections or something? Well, we can get a signal from something, apparently. Well, now, now we're getting some signals. And now we're not getting signals. Even though the Darud helipad, which used to give us signals, is right there. Space Center's here. Um, we should be basically over to Space Center when we do the burn for Minmus. Um, but we have to separate off Valentina first. I'm going to just undock from Valentina and see if this thing will get comms otherwise. Well, it's got no people, yeah, but it's got a controller. I mean, there's the KSC. We ought to have comms. I'm going to do the drastic thing and restart my computer. And maybe that'll help, I don't know. I, I don't see any logic to this. I've done many space missions in this particular install without having this problem. We had power. We had antennae that we've used before. We had a controller that we used before. Okay, so even a system restart has not provided us with comms here. And again, I do not know why. Uh, let me just check if it ever gets comms. Oh, it gets comms here. It gets comms... Uh, it's bouncing through Gamma 2 to... Yeah, it seems like this Valentina Tereshkova hex pad is the only thing that has comms for us. That seems... strange, isn't it? Uh, let me just check the settings. Is there anything that could suggest why this would happen? Maybe it is the glitch people talked about the, with the range modifier, I don't know. Let me just bump that back down to like 0.98. I wish it would hit 1. I'm gonna fill around with these. Okay, and I'm gonna toggle enable ground stations. Let's say accept. Oop. I really wish I hadn't clicked apply there. Uh, but uh, that's because I removed the ground station. Okay. All right. And now... All extra ground stations. Accept. Apply. Close. Well, now we have comms. But, no, but, but we always had comms thanks to the Tereshkova thing. So, okay. That's not actually proving that we've solved anything. Let me... Redo that node and see if we can get comms over there. Wow, okay. Sudden blurries. Uh, things have changed somehow? Between the last time I played and this time? Like a lot of things? Or maybe I just pressed a hotkey accidentally? To get blurriness? Okay, well, I do have reshade. Reshade. We'll just turn off the cinematic depth of field. And... Now I can't see anything. Okay, well, now I can see it. And there's no weird depth of field effect. All right, let's see if we have comms near the node or whether that's still bad. There are a lot of red lines coming in through on this side. No comms at the Darud helipad and... Yeah, no comms from the Space Center. Other things seem to link to the Space Center, but we can't link to the Space Center. Gamma doesn't seem to provide a relay. Gamma 3 ought to have, but we couldn't connect to it. 
There's Gamma 2 that sometimes helps out. But Gamma 2 does not seem to help out to the Space Center. Gamma 2 itself does not connect to the Space Center. Okay, well, having carefully considered the situation and still wanting to get on with this mission, uh, let's just verify, I have antennae certainly capable of communicating with the surface of Kerbin. I have electric charge, sometimes does communicate with the sur surface of Kerbin, but only one site for some reason. Uh, the, the, the Valentina Tereshkova launch site, that's like a conspiracy. But, uh, yes, we will, we will cheat. Well, I mean, we will go into settings, difficulty options, and we are not going to require signal for control. Uh, we will see if that works. Okay, so now we have limited probe control, and we'll turn that back on once we have completed the mission, or maybe when we have picked up the Kerbal, we will see. So, I will replot for Minmus, and we are going to try this. Hopefully I actually do have control. SAS seems to turn on, okay. But I can't replot. It won't let me plot the maneuver node. Okay, well, that's the thing that I can deal with for now. Now it's full. Okay, well, I can replot now, I guess. I apparently can't turn. That's sort of a problem. Yeah, I don't have any physical control. <laughs> uh, so I can only go straight here. I'm sure there's no problem with that. So yeah, if somebody has an idea of how to fix this, that would be wonderful. Well, we were obviously quite a bit off since I can't steer at all. And let's see. Okay, well, I can't delete a maneuver node. We will wait until we can get a connection before Doing anything else. Okay, we have a connection now. Alright. Can I steer now? Yes, I can steer now. Okay, well that's a nice Minmus Periapsis. We have to rendezvous anyway. So, hopefully we can do this quickly. Okay, right. Let's head on over there. We've picked up something around Minmus. That's fine. Uh, look at all the lines going back to Kerbin right now. It's like, just the space center is not something we can communicate to, which is crazy. The space center is on the opposite side right now, so... Uh, we can be sure that one of the lines is not going there. But... Yeah. Uh, well, since we have plenty of communications... Uh, it was, wasn't a cheat. It was a setting. Uh, we are going to turn this back on, and... Okay, well, uh, we're sort of approximately in line with Lanley. At least, uh, shouldn't be too hard to get an opportunity to get to Lanley. We'll keep it high so that we can correct. Now, well, that doesn't look like correcting inclination is going to be easy, is it? <laughs> oh well. Anyway, we've got Delta V here. I hope it isn't pulling from the pod. Okay, doesn't seem to be. I disabled crossfeed on that docking port, so... Okay, and given the direction of things, we should have comms at periapsis. Okay, probably close enough. Pretty sure it's not reading the correct delta V in on the left hand side there but oh no we're going the wrong way gosh darn it seriously well on the bright side up there we can basically flip ourselves around so we will do that we will do that and we will remain very high over Minmus 
like that. All right, we'll start with that. Over here, correct the rest of the inclination, and then we'll figure out how to meet up with Lanley. It seems to only happen when I'm approaching a node. <laughs> uh, oh, now we have comp. Okay, well, we could probably do it right now. It does occur to me now that for all this time we've been lingering around here, eight days so far, Val has been hanging out around Kerbin, right? Not the best thing. Okay, we found Lanley Kerman. Let's go straight to Lanley Kerman before they kill Lanley Kerman. Make sure they know that we know that Lanley actually does have resources. Just in case. Minor. Lanley is a miner. I don't mean underage, I mean is supposed to mine things. Okay, fine. Uh, we'll wait until the mission gets a little bit closer. I think we'll take a kilometer. Let's just go with it. Finally, I better have a flag. Anyway, at least just rescuing Lanley will pay for the mission. The rescue fulfillment was a hundred thousand. All right, Lanley is boarded. For whatever reason, did not lose a chunk of nitrogen right there, but uh, sometimes when we EV, it will. But all right, we need to get to a lower orbit. Okay, ignition. Valentina Kerman is already losing her mind. 33% stress. Well, shoot. We've just gotten started here, but uh, nine days. Well, we can get back. We can get back. Using a lot of ignitions here. How are we doing? 21 left on the spark and for the ants, 129. So. Seems good to me. Okay. Well, let us first of all bring up surface info so that we can see our biomes and go to the track, uh, go to the space center mission control and see which biomes we needed again. Okay, Midlands, Brown Highlands, or Basins. I'm just gonna go for a Midland. Uh, it seems the safest. There's always Midlands. Midlands are consistent. And generally large. Okay, so we are going to... Well, we're above the Midlands right now, but I'd like to be in daylight, of course. So we'll find a location over here, and we'll basically kill our velocity, velocity immediately. If we've got a good location. I mean, this seems okay. Let's just separate. This will be a dummy stage. We might not even have control over it, but we'll let that be for now. Oop, it suddenly got very quiet. Okay. Oh, now it's Highlands. Now it's Highlands. Oh, now it's Midlands. Well, so much for them being big and consistent. Okay. Okay, well it says Midlands now, but how pick you know, uh, how small are these Midlands? Okay, well, here I go. We're just gonna stop dead and go straight down. We have plenty of Delta V for this. If we need to go to a different biome, we probably could. Basically going straight down here. That little rock there looks potential, uh, potentially something. I don't know. I know it's the little ones. Maybe not so visible though, but it's a very plain 
surface, so it's easy to spot stuff. Okay, that's it. Engine off. And, well, let's see if Lanley has a flag. Whoa, I just pressed spacebar and Lanley just went like that. Okay, Lanley. Um, find a flag. Okay, Lanley uh, at hopefully the Midlands at Minmus Midlands first flag anyway. Okay, right. Well, yep, we got the plan of flag on Minmus thing. Green sandstone. Well, here we go. Um, I've seen likely possibilities. I mean, we might as well go towards something, right? That one over there, it's probably not, but anyway, let's go. Climb. Well, it's climbable. That means it might be, but... Um... No, I don't think so. It might be a parallax thing, actually, since it's climbable. Great, so now the fact that they are collidable isn't a guarantee that they are actually the thing we're looking for. Right, normally the collidability of a rock is indicative of whether it's the important type rock. I'll give it until we are at 2.5 mod propellant, then we'll hold, head back. I doubt it is one, but I'll give this one a try. I wonder if we... maybe Kerbalism makes it so you need tools or something to pick up a sample or something. But I think we got a surface sample before, so I don't know. No, I guess we can get a surface sample. I mean, you know, we can get the science. Okay. Right, well, continuing on. Oh, come on. Uh, I think I see a smaller thing over there. No, those are small, but it could just be another parallax thing. Well, it says Midlands here, so we know we're at the Midlands. But this is not a green sandstone. Okay, well, we're a kilometer away from the pod. And we're down to half our mob propellant, so I'm just going to head back and then maybe along the way we'll see something, but I doubt it. Uh, let me just take a look at something over here. I think it's just the same kind of rock, but... Well, I don't know. It's a little bit different color. Maybe it's what it is. Let me see. That's definitely not one of the other ones. Oh, uh, yes, pick up green sandstone. Well, we managed to get it in the end. Okay, keep experiment. And it disappeared. Okay, so success. Well, so far, anyway. Okay, board. Okay, wow. Just flop all over the place, why don't you? No more nitrogen. Now, see, I only did one EVA. I only did one EVA, and then suddenly no more nitrogen. I guess after, I mean, uh, as far as the depress option, where is that anyway? There was, I think somebody said, maybe if we have pressure control not running, it'll be okay. Well, Lanley's gonna have to get back soon. The current biome thing is not reading right there, but anyway. We've got we've got the things. Let's just get on with it. Um, we're trying to rendezvous with that. We have to make sure to go the correct way, which is retrograde. And you know what? I think I'm running out of time here, so because we had a lot of angst with the whole communication issue. So if you have any thoughts about that and where I went wrong with that, 
uh, please do tell me in the comments below and we will see about the fate of Lanley in the next episode. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I will see you next time.